I am Albert Einstein by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I am Albert Einstein. Ever been called weird or different? That's what they thought I was. On the day I was born, my mom was actually scared since she'd never seen a baby with such a giant head. Is that normal? Don't worry, he'll be just like everyone else. Doc, I wouldn't be so sure about that. It didn't get easier. I did things my own way, in my own time. I didn't speak until I was three years old. And when I did, my speech was so odd, our maid used to call me Dare What's Dare de Perta mean? The dopey one. Lady, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Some say I took longer to speak because I didn't think in words. I thought in pictures. Even when I did speak, I'd practice each sentence in my head, silently moving my lips and whispering to myself until I had every word right. Albert, what are you saying? Are you sick? Son, what's wrong? Does something hurt? Do you have to go to the bathroom? I don't understand. Are you hungry? Do you need wiener schnitzel? <coughs> Flying. You want to fly. Wait, he's trying to say something. My hair is so awesome. When I was little, my cousins ran around and played games outside. I liked playing alone. I did puzzles, fed the pigeons, or just watched my toy boat sail in a water pail. When they saw me, other people called me, Father Boar, goody goody. What are you doing, Albie? Watching a sail. That's it? It helps me think. I like thinking. But the biggest moment in my young life came when I was four or five years old and sick in bed. To cheer me up, my father brought me a compass. Explorers use it to help find their way. What's it do? You'll see. I was fascinated by how the compass worked. No matter which way my father turned it, the needle always pointed north. What if I turn it this way? It'll point north. What if I put it upside down? It'll point north. What if I'm the one who's upside down? North. Nothing touched the needle but somehow the compass knew where to point. Like it was guided by an invisible, like it was guided by an invisible force. Right there, I could feel it. There was something behind things, something deeply hidden. The world, the stars, even outer space with all its planets. The whole universe had its own order. That compass made a deep and lasting impression on me. It showed me that life has mystery. The universe has mystery. And it made me curious. Why did the universe behave the way it did? By the time I was nine years old, I would make complex structures with my blocks and tall houses of cards. It took persistence and patience, but I never gave up. My sister would watch as I'd build them 14 stories high. It's gonna fall. 
No, it won't. The structure is just right. I'd even see the structure in music as I played my favorite instrument, the one that always helped me think, the violin. Today, people say I was a genius, but back then, teachers thought I was a daydreamer. One even told me, Albert Einstein, you'll never amount to anything. You're a foolish dreamer. But there's nothing foolish about dreaming big and being curious. When I was in sixth grade on Thursday nights, a medical student would come to our house for dinner. His name was Max Talmud. He used to bring me books. Here's one about something called geometry. Like the compass, that geometry book changed my life. By the time I was 12, I was doing all different kinds of math, like geometry and algebra, by 15, I was on to something called calculus. That means the boy was smart. He already knew more than I did, and I was in medical school. Can't you see? Math has its own logical structure, just like music and my awesome hair. Soon after, I mastered the entire math curriculum. Did that mean I always did well at school? Ask my father. He got good grades and a few bad ones. That's right, even Einstein got bad grades. In college, he flunked a course in physics, the study of matter and energy. I was bored. You got the lowest grade in the class. You do know I'm going to invent the theory of relativity, right? Go to your room. I never stopped thinking about how things work. As I got older, I even replaced my toy sailboat with a real one. When the wind stopped blowing, I scribbled notes in my notepad. When it picked up again, I continued sailing. You really like boats, don't you? They help me think. I like thinking. My thinking and curious nature eventually led me to the patent office in Bern, Switzerland. My job was to examine new inventions. But sometimes I'd start thinking about my own scientific theories. Whenever my boss walked by, I'd hide my ideas in my desk drawer. What are you working on? Work. You sure? Absolutely. But even I didn't know I was on the verge of my greatest breakthrough. I was 28 years old, just sitting at work as the thought occurred to me. When a person falls, like a man falling off a roof, he doesn't feel his own weight. Close your eyes. You can picture it too. As the man falls, if he opens his pockets, everything inside floats there next to him. That may sound weird or different, but, to, but for me, it was the happiest thought of my life. Why? Because it sparked an idea that helped me link motion with gravity. Gravity is the force in the universe that keeps us from floating away. It took me eight years of hard work Eight years of asking hard questions to figure it out, but I did. From there, I began to question ideas that most other scientists thought were true. I didn't agree with what most people believed. In the beginning, other scientists wouldn't listen. Are you crazy? That makes no sense. What does it even mean? It's a formula to help us explain the universe and all of space. It means that everything is full of energy. 
Sometimes it's hard to get people to go along with you, especially when you discover something new. But I promise you, if you keep at it, it'll be worth it. What'd you win? The Nobel Prize in Physics. That's amazing. My theory of relativity forever changed how we understand the universe. Even better. You know your hair is awesome, right? I keep telling people that. In my life, I was always thinking, always asking questions. But the most important one I asked was, why? Never stop asking why. Never stop trying to figure out how the world works. And never lose that feeling of excitement as you try to find the answer. Curiosity is one of the most powerful forces of nature. It can take you places no one's ever been and let you do things no one's ever done. Will that make you weird or different? Who cares if it does? Every single one of us is different. No one on this planet is just like you. Being different is what makes you special. So find what you love. Learn everything you can about it and share the best parts with anyone who will listen. You never know who you'll inspire. His hair is really awesome. I was thinking the same exact thing. I am Albert Einstein. I will never stop being curious, and I hope you won't either. The more questions you ask, the more answers you'll find, and the more beauty you'll uncover in the universe. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. One cannot help but be in awe when he contemplates the mysteries of eternity, of life, of the marvelous structure of reality. Albert Einstein The End Thank you for watching. Enjoyed this read-aloud book? Click like and subscribe to The Reading Booth.